Welcome to 25 years of the West Gippsland Catchment Management Authority. Working with the Gippsland community since 1997 to care for and improve the environment. We are privileged to be partnering with and working on the lands and waters of the Gunai Kurnai, Bunurong and Boon Wurrung and Wurundjeri peoples. Mumaninji, welcome. The water to us as Gunai Kurnai people is a special, significant place. It's um, us for, you know, to care and to heal country and to make it a lot more better for future generations. The significance of water in central and west Gippsland and south Gippsland played a huge part for traditional owners to be able to live by their means on, on country and um, also provided direction and um, boundaries, things like this. Water is essential to all our lives. Providing water for all our needs comes at a cost to the environment and our role is to coordinate and collaborate with others to minimise this impact. Over the last quarter of a century, the West Gippsland CMA has worked with thousands of landholders across the region's waterways to repair, improve and make them more resilient to the pressures placed upon them. The biggest legacy for the CMA over 25 years is probably embedded in the relationships and partnerships. You know, when we look back, there's sort of a common thread and that is the people element of catchment management and that to me is what catchment management authorities do so well and something we're really proud of and certainly be what uh, we'll be aiming to continue to do for many, many years to come. This mighty effort includes hundreds of kilometres of willows and other weeds removed, rivers and creeks fenced, and then planted with native vegetation. Wetlands have been restored and water released into the environment to nurture these vital ecosystems and the wildlife that relies on them. We've worked with farmers and other industries to develop innovative practices to limit the impact that they have on our waterways. On the Thompson, we have linked the river once again for migratory fish to move upstream in order to breed. The Thompson is um, a flagship waterway in terms of um, our projects, so there's quite a few projects on it for improving the riparian condition but also improving the connectivity of the river system. So in terms of connectivity we have two fishways on the Thompson now, so one's down at Kauawea and a recently constructed one, the Horseshoe Bend Fishway, which has reinstated the old part of the river channel. And that actually allows um, fish species in particular to move up and downstream with different parts of their life cycle, which is really important for our migratory native species and for their population structure. So fish can actually move another 20 kilometres upstream of the Horseshoe Bend Tunnel, as well as another 60 odd kilometres up the Aberfeldy, which is a tributary, which gives them more access to habitat and important areas for them to have their young all spawn and move up and downstream. So it's my hope that the Thompson will you know, become a river that everybody loves, that they're connected to and they want to see continue to improve and look after into the future. So we're standing on the Mid Thompson and we're in the middle of the McAllister Irrigation District. So in this section the river's in the floodplain. So because it just meanders through the floodplain, the river will move and it creates a horseshoe bend and then it eventually cuts that off. And what you get there is a perfect little wetland, which used to be part of the river channel. Uh, but once it's cut off from the main river, it has a different flow regime, so it will ha be wet and then dry, like cyclically. Um, and that's really good for a lot of Australian wetland plants and flora and fauna. So it just goes crazy. The diversity and the productivity of those wetlands is amazing. So this area is really productive farmland. We work with the landholders to get the best result for the waterway and from, for them. So Reveg provides lots of on-farm benefits. Um, like shelter and the fence is great for stock control, things like that. And also they see the benefits of having a healthy waterway and how that impacts the paddock. Often the best part of working with a farmer is seeing them go through the process, seeing the change and understanding what we're doing and why. On this property, the farmer's fencing off his own wetlands and we're just able to help out with a mission that they're already going and they'll continue on in the future. And just as rivers are vital for aquatic life, so too wetlands provide habitat for fish, frogs, insects and a host of bird life. Over the last 30, 40 years, the view of wetlands has changed a lot. They were seen as wastelands for the large part. 
Uh, people used to go to all efforts to drain, drain the wetlands, uh, make them more arable, good for agriculture. But we're really starting to see over the last 10 or so years that connection with the wetlands has changed. We see the value of, of having a good healthy ecosystem um, that benefits both agriculture and the environment. Um, there's also good mental health aspects um, to wetlands. So people are appreciating more, come and um, sit down in the wetland and really reflect um, and relax. Um, so the, um, the importance of wetlands is, is um, more prevalent um, these days. The Harbour Ass is a really good case study for partnerships and how we work with our partners to get the best outcome. We work with the Field of Game Australia Sail Branch down here. They manage the land side of things, we manage the water side of things. Uh, but we get together a couple of times a year and, and throughout the year just to make sure we're getting the best for the wetland. So the Field and Game goes ahead and, and plants lots of trees, they deal with the weeds and we coordinate the environmental water flows to complement those works. And you'll see if you go out there, um, the environment is just singing. It's important to work with the, the TO groups um, down here. Uh, they've got a really strong connection with country, uh, thousands of years of knowledge. Um, so we work closely with them to do a two-way um, sharing of knowledge. Uh, so we've got a good understanding of the um, environmental and ecological needs of the wetlands. Um, they've got thousands of years of, of, of heritage and, and cultural knowledge. Um, and we work together um, to get the best outcome for the environment as well as the cultural um, values as well. The indicators for success in wetlands, I look for healthy red gums, uh, that's a really good indicator, but also listening, so you can hear the frogs um, calling, you can hear the birds calling, sometimes you'll notice colonial birds nesting in trees, they're the kind of the indicators for me, and just the, the feel of the environment is kind of, you can, you can tell if it's healthy just by being out there. In southern Gippsland on Bunurong country, rivers such as the Powlett, or Kagarung Mong, meet the sea at spectacular and dynamic estuaries. Traditional owners, land care, community and partners are all working together to manage, protect and enhance these waterways. Womanjika means welcome or come to the fire. Share your knowledge, your spirit, your culture, your nous. Come for a walk. Come for a talk. This land we're on here right now is the Powlett River, the mouth of Mother Earth Place. We deem this very special. Waterways, fresh water coming into salt water. Special, spiritual, connective. We want you to become carers with us. Take care of the waterways, fresh water, keep them pristine the best we can. Without our fresh waters and our mother here, we're nothing. So 20 years ago, we direct seeded this vegetation. Um, what I love about it is coming back and checking in on it occasionally. It's in a public area. This is the Bass Coast Rail Trail. So people use this every day now. And back then it was quite a novel thing to do direct seeding along a rail trail. They were both new ideas, but it's exciting to have projects that are 20 years old that you look back and go, on, no, we, we created that. A couple of hours of direct seeding and here we are 20 years later. The rail trail crosses the creek and then it hits the Powlett River. And the Powlett River has land care plantings and wetlands that have been protected along it. It's basically landscape change. And when you get to visit them years later you see how your work and lots of other agencies work has joined and we have this sort of network of corridors and rivers that are forming corridors for wildlife but they're also providing recreational benefits and the community um, have only got more and more on board in that time because nothing breeds success like seeing it. A little further down the road lots of exciting things are happening with landholders, land care and community members in the Agnes River catchment. At the top of the catchment is cool, temperate rainforest, a haven for some of the largest remaining trees in Victoria. Well, the Agnes River, the head of the Agnes River is not far from us, and it's only a very short river, but it's a very important river. The water from the Agnes River flows into the inlet, and, and there's a massive seagrass area in our inlet that needs to be protected from the fertilisers that have been pumped into the country over the years, being washed down and um, it doesn't really do the seagrass any good at all. We're hoping that our trees will um, filter that before it even gets to the river and then before it gets into the inlet. So I think planting it back into native trees is the answer. So that's what we did. Well, we've done probably close to 140,000 trees now. We have a little competition with our neighbour, so I might be um, telling a little lie there. We mightn't quite have that many, but don't tell him that. we. Um, I think, I think we're about 20,000 in front of him and, and counting. <laughs> in 
In the middle of the Agnes catchment, around 60% is agricultural land. It's prime dairy country, and most of it has now been fenced and planted. Above Corner Inlet, it cascades over Agnes Falls, a 59 metre cascade, the single highest span falls in Victoria, forming a barrier between the upper plateau and the coastal plains. Below the falls, the river narrows and then winds through spectacular canyons. It then flows through more agricultural land before meandering into Corner Inlet. Over the last 25 years, around 96% of the Agnes has been protected with plantings and fences reducing the impact of livestock and rain events on the waterway. This will soon total 100%. We have also worked with willing farmers to manage the way they run their farms and reduce the amount of nutrients entering the river and ultimately the sea. This is an example of a whole of catchment approach where work done in the upper catchment protects and reduces impacts on the estuary and inlet below. Corner Inlet supports um, a diverse range of species, but particularly important in, internationally are the um, migratory wading bird species that fly here from lots of different parts of the world, but particularly the Arctic Circle, Siberia, uh, Alaska. So they spend the summer months in the Northern Hemisphere and they fly down, feed up in corner inlet waters and then fly back. They also face a variety of threats and one of them is water quality. And we've been working really hard with the community and, and our wider NRM partners over many years to protect the habitat from catchment inputs and it's been a real showcase of our CMA over the uh, over a long period of time and a great example of what the community and our own partners and the CMA can do over a, a reasonable period of time. Well obviously this area was one of those um, vastly cleared areas that's um, over cleared and we're trying to redress that and we're very much aware of the biodiversity that's required to go back in here. Our plan is to bring this back section by section to a healthier state. Oh, the CMA have been absolutely fantastic and the more collaboration we have with them, the more people come on board. So farmers up here who have worked with the CMA now um, are seen by neighbouring farmers what can be done and their, 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 their land becomes more productive but and also um, magically more aesthetic and I think as, as other farmers travel around they'll look into a farm which was once had no trees at all and see a whole line of beautiful trees running wrapping around the river um, they think gee maybe my place could look like that even though I'm sort of a very conventional farmer maybe there's a way so gradually and increasingly people are coming on board and it's very very exciting to see that. So looking forward, I think what we need to continue to do is nurture people's passion, that being passion for rivers, passion for doing work, uh, passion for creating a better future for next generation. And fundamentally, when you think of our patch, uh, West Gippsland Catch and Management Authority, it's incredibly diverse, amazing environment, great place to live, and so many things that people can be passionate about. So if we can tap into that, and get people continuing to do that great work, the next 25 years is going to be incredibly exciting for all of us. We would like to take this opportunity on our 25th anniversary to thank all our partners, including traditional owners, landholders, volunteers, contractors and staff members for the work that's been done, not just in the Agnes, but right through the West Gippsland area. For minimising our impact to every creek, river, wetland, estuary and lake system, over the last quarter of a century. We've come a long way, but there's so much more to be done. We look forward to the next 25 years, where we will continue to connect water and people right across West Gippsland.